Most truck campers are probably similar. For my camper, I don't need two gallons. I use usually like a gallon and a part of another one. Stuff's pretty cheap. I keep it on hand. The only other tools, the only real tools that I use are a breaker bar and a 1 and 1 16th inch socket. And this is for the hot water heater. It's kind of heavy duty. It's not for torque. It's just I need the 1 and 1 16th inch socket. That's where our tank drain is. That is not the low point drain. That just empties the holding tank for a fresh water. So now I'm going to pull the plug and drain my hot water heater. I haven't done the bypass yet. I just go ahead and get this out of the way. So, and I open this valve here, just to be sure there's no pressure. There's not hot water in it, it's just water. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. <laughs> and you're gonna get a little wet here, maybe. So this is a good time to inspect your anode. This one's not corroding as much as my other one did. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. I do not put the plug back in. For winter, I lay it in here. We're not driving it a bunch. Go away, ladybug. I lay it in there. I close my valve. And I'll come back and dry this off later. So I'm gonna leave this open for right now. So my hot water heater is drained. Leaving the plug out. Shut the little safety relief valve off. I've got some inside stuff to do. I thought I'd explain it out here because once I go inside it's gonna be dark. It's gonna be harder for my wife to film. So what I'm gonna do inside first thing is I will go ahead and open up the low point drains. I'll show you where those are at and I'll open up a faucet so that it's got air and it'll let low point drains better drains and what those do is any water that's left in the lines is it'll let it drain out. After those have drained out, I'll shut off my hot water heater bypass valve and then close my low point drains again because you got you need those closed when you're pumping the antifreeze, the RV and marine antifreeze into your system. So next steps will be open up the low point drains, open up a faucet so it gives it some air so it can drain out a little bit easier. And then I'll close my bypass on the hot water heater and we'll go from there. So to access my winterization stuff in my camper, it's actually, they did a pretty good job. It's all, it's all right down there. So here goes the low point drain for the cold and the hot water. So that's two valves. Can you hear that? Mm -hmm. That's because I let it have air so it can drain out the lines. And that runs out and it'll run underneath the truck. So I give that plenty of time. I'm doing that, I'll go ahead and do the bypass for my hot water heater. And what this does is, it's a valve that basically takes your hot water heater out of the line so that when you're putting, we got a four gallon hot water heater tank. A lot of, most people are gonna have six. But that keeps me from having to pump four gallons of RV Marine antifreeze into it. So I just shut it off because there's no need because my tank's empty. So I'm gonna do the bypass now on ours. It is under the dinette seat, and it's going to be a dark place down there, so <laughs> I'm just going to have to reach in there and do it, and you're going to have to take me for my word. All right, so there is a panel in here that is we've removed, and there's a valve, and you just got to feel it. Can you hear that? Yes. So that's more basically draining out. So I just bypassed it, so now my water will not, or anything I pump through my water pump will not go to the hot water heater. I just took it completely out of the line. When I'm draining the low point drains, if the camper's off the truck, it's really easy to see when they stop flowing because they're coming out. You can see the hole they're coming out of. I still got the camper on the truck. I'm not taking it off today because we may still do a dry trip or two in it. I'm just giving it a good 15 minutes to make sure that everything's drained out. There's not a lot of water in the lines, but uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm, you gotta shut the low point drains off before you begin to pump your RV antifreeze through. The one thing <laughs> that we're doing that's really unusual to this time is it's 70 degrees yeah. and sunny. Ugh. Normally I winterize at 8.30 at night after <laughs> I've gotten off work and it's already 36 <laughs> degrees and it's gonna be like 
28 degrees at night and I'm yeah. in a rush and I'm cranky. So to, at least we're doing it now. It's going to get, start getting cold next week. Why? Well, yeah. Yeah. If there's a just a night or two, we'll run the heat to keep everything from freezing. But it's going to be like a solid week of uh, of this, and, and it's not that big a deal to unwinterize. If if we get like a really pretty week and we want to go do something and we want water, it's two gallons of RV or it's a gallon and a half of RV antifreeze, and it's about if I'm not videoing it, it's probably about 30 minutes if I take my time. So it's not like it's a big deal to winterize and unwinterize. We've given it time to drain and. Just to clarify, clarify, I opened up all my faucets. I opened up one on here, I opened up the one in the bathroom, the hot and cold, and I opened up the ones outside for our outside shower. Because whatever water's trapped in that line, there's a little bit of a vacuum. If you don't open that up, I don't believe it drains all the way out. So you gotta make sure before you start pumping your pink stuff in to go ahead and close all those. So. Those are closed. I've closed the ones in the bathroom. I flushed the toilet to clear it. And uh, uh, we've closed the ones on the outside. So now I'm gonna close my low point drains. So you and almost have to be a little bit, bit of a gymnast, right? It's not too bad. They're right here, <laughs> right? Now I've seen some rigs that are much better and I'm sure there are some that are much worse. But um, this one isn't too bad. I think that the Lance's the stations actually your pump stations actually on the outside of some of theirs and that would be awesome it depends on your rig yeah. right yeah but the steps will be the same it's right. just where things are at will be different right and if you got a fancier larger rig you'll have more faucets to turn on and more stuff to do mm -hmm. and i have no idea how the on-demand water heaters work mm -hmm. so ours is just a regular gas water heater just old right? fashioned I knew I forgot something. A small for my camper, a small straight screwdriver. And the reason being is Adventurer's been really cool and they've given me a suction hose. And there's a valve down here that I can switch between pulling from my freshwater tank to pulling from whatever receptacle this goes in. So the only problem is, I'll take the cap off. The only problem is, is I'll show you. Because of that clamp, it's too big to fit through there. Not a big deal. I just loosen said clamp. And I push it back on the hose a good ways. And then I can put this right down in my jug of pink stuff. Yeah. So pretty cool that Adventure gives me that. Now I'm gonna turn the little valve that switches from my normal freshwater tank to pull it from this hose. So let me do that. You gotta use my other hand. You're gonna get a butt shot. Okay, now, if I've done everything right, when I turn on my water pump, it's gonna come on and it's gonna pressurize pulling from that pink jug, okay? If I've done something wrong, like I haven't got my bypass or faucet is open, it'll never pressurize because it'll be pumping. Here we go. It's pulling the pink stuff out. There you go, it's running pink. Running pink. We're gonna go to our bathroom. Oh, so you may or may not call that beat that we just heard but that was my carbon monoxide detector going off. And the reason that it was, or my LP detector, is because I had the jug in front of it. And if you block those things, they will beep, 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 beep. So let's go. I'm gonna do my faucet first. There we go. Longer line, so it took a little longer. Okay, shower heads. And I'll have to wipe the pink stuff up because it's gonna, some of it's gonna get off. That's why I got some paper towels in here. Make sure I got some in there. It is so easy to forget your outside shower. So if you got an outside faucet, outside shower, make sure you do it. 
um, that'll be one of the first things to freeze and bust. Mm. So, nice and pink. Nice and pink. There's the inner air carbon monoxide detector. Mm -hmm. So, I've done a bypass on the hot water heater, drained it, and then did no low point drains, and then everywhere where you've got water, everywhere where you've got water that goes in this camp, in a camper, you know, out of every faucet, you need to make sure you get the pink stuff through it. So now I'm gonna go take the hose out, or turn the water pump off, take the hose out, kind of get that um, button back up, and then we'll pour some in the drains to capture the P-trap. And we've actually been pretty efficient on this one. Uh, normally I've been through a gallon by now, or almost a gallon by now, but it seems to be doing pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to, I've turned the water pump off. I'm gonna change this valve again. So it's going back to tank. So I was like super close to, I mean, you can see there. Oh yeah. But I'll use a little bit more out of the other jug to pour down my drains. So I, I'd use a little more than a gallon. So now I want to put this fitting, snug it back up. Okay, and then that's back on there. Like I said, I really appreciate Adventurer hooking this up with that. You just kind of touch back in there. Put a paper towel to wipe up all that with. Let me go ahead and put this cover back in place. Just to make sure that I've got like straight up pink stuff in there. This stuff is, what was it, a gallon, honey? Like $2. $2 a gallon? Walmart, yeah. So compared to $2.50 a gallon, Compare that to uh, to busted water lines or busted <laughs> sewage plumbing. Yeah, this well, is pretty cheap insurance. Cheaper, yeah. I don't skimp on this. Put the lid on this so I can't spill it, and I can do that. Mm -hmm. So all I got left to do now is I'm gonna take some paper towels and I'm gonna clean up the random pink stuff that splattered so it won't stain or get icky. And uh, the carbon monoxide detector stopped beeping because I've moved the jug out from in front of it. That's it. Pretty pretty easy peasy winterizing the 89 RB from Adventurer, and I believe most every truck camper is very similar. And the key is, is don't wait till the last minute, as bad as it is. If you look ahead and the weather's gonna be cold, you know you're not gonna be using it a whole bunch anymore, just suck it up and winterize it.